Hello, Lori Papau here. This is an intermediate Ukrainian style A. If you are looking for a beginner Pisanki style A video, please see my basic video first. This will be the design that we will go with. Here we have a goose egg that has all the five base lines. My next step will be to work on the vertical lines. I'm going to make half inch bands running down and around the egg. So in all these um, vertical lines that we have here, I will have a half inch band and this is how I'm achieving this. Back up to the top here. I will do the same on this side also. Okay, now I'm going to start on this side. All my bands are done, but now I want to put spacers. If you look on the photo, you will see these black areas. I refer to these as spacers. There's spaces between this design and this design and the main design. It's a nice separation. So in order to do this, I will look at my egg again. And my band for this design looks just a little bit wide. So I think I will put a spacer right next to this line. And in doing so, this will make this band that, that little bit smaller. And I think that will make the design look nicer instead of such a large uh, design. Something I wanted to mention is that while you're doing these lines, and this also helps when you're working with your um, uh, kiska, is to try and learn to move, not just move the pin, but also move the egg as you're guiding the pencil. The reason is that if you're doing this, you have to stop and then start again, stop, start again. And if you're moving the egg, this sort of assists you and you can make longer strokes with your pencil. And also when you're waxing, your uh, lines. Okay, now we have a spacer. Going back to the design, I like this band here. I am going to 
use my tape measure and mark off an eighth of an inch all around the band. Okay, as I said before, I will move my egg as I'm guiding my pencil. Makes it go much faster this way. And you tend to have smoother lines also. So when you're doing your wax lines, you have smoother lines to work with. Again, I'm going to want a spacer here. So I will start right next to this line and move my egg. Here we are with this band, the spacer, the smaller band, and the next spacer. Now I will want to divide the band up. As you can see here, we have our uh, diamond shapes. And this is how we will do this. You can either measure the band out, or you can just guesstimate and divide it. After this is done, then I make tick marks in these little uh, squares here. To make my diamond shapes, I will go from point to point. From the tick marks and make nice even diamond shapes. I will do this on all four bands, but right now I will show you how I uh, will divide the smaller band. First off, I'm just going to extend my spacer line on both ends. And again, I can either use the tape measure 
or a paper strip. But I can look at this and guesstimate where to divide this. And I will make these divisions. I am looking here to see if any of these will coordinate with what I'm doing and I found that this will work out just fine following these lines. Many times our other guidelines will help us with our next uh, design. Okay, I do have these divided, but that's too large of a space. So again, I will be dividing each one of these spaces just like this. So I will be able to work on this design at a later time. But right now what I'm going to do is set it up by putting a tick mark in each little space here. What will happen is for this design, what I will want to do is to make little triangles. So I'm making little triangles. The little tick mark was where I wanted to uh, take my point to. And I will continue this again on all four panels. Because I don't want to put a lot of pencil marks, I only put the little tick marks in these spaces. But I know that when I'm going to be uh, applying the wax, that I will just take my wax line to that tick mark and then back down. There's no need to make all the extra pencil marks, so I don't. But I do want to mention that in this area, this band here, that after I've made my little um, triangles, my next step will be, and I'm going to show you on paper because it'll be uh, too small to see on the egg. What I will be doing is that in each of these triangles, I'm going to make slash marks going one way. So, when I'm waxing in all of these triangles, I will be going this way. When I have all of the triangles and all the slash marks inside then I will work on these outer triangles and 
my slash marks will go the opposite way. Now I want to work on the band. So this here's the larger band. Many times it helps to make a drawing of the design that you may be working on. You can see if you want to make changes this way. For this larger band, I'm planning to make these little designs on each side of the triangle. These will be all white. Then I'm going to put a circle in the middle. And from the circle, I'm going to extend lines and put dots at the end there. Now, this design can be changed up, or you can put a totally different design. This is just one that I have chosen. I'm going to turn my paper over here so you can see. So this will be my design. I also will have a spacer And then a second spacer, and on the second spacer, I have made little slash lines in there. And now I have this triangle. I can put more design here, or I can just leave it a solid color. When working on my egg, in order to make sure that I'm going to put my little designs in the same area on all sides. I will make little tick marks right in the middle and this will give me a guideline to work with this here. I won't be doing this in pencil. I will just do this with wax. That for me, this would be just too many pencil marks. Um, it's the same thing with, with the spacer line. There's no need for me to put pencil spacer lines. I know that that's where I uh, want to uh, go with this here. So this is the design that I will be working on on the larger band. Now in my panel here, I'm going to mark off an inch. I'm also going to put a little spacer and now I'll make a little tick mark so I can make my diamond shape. The next thing I want to do is put little tick marks in the middle on the sides of each um, um, part of the diamond here. 
Now I'm taking my pencil and drawing this area in half and again on the other side. Also at this time I want to make very thin spacer lines next to these middle lines. One on each side. I'm now going to be working in the squares, but to give you an idea what I'm going to do, I have a little drawing on paper. So here's my plain square. Here I'm showing where I have drawn more spacers. The reason I've drawn these spacers is because I'm forming these little boxes all inside the square. In the photo you can see this little green area here. This is what why I'm making the spacers so that I can form these little boxes inside the square. So here's how I do this. Again, I am going to make very thin line spacers. inside each square and in doing so now I have a middle area that I will work on later. But now I need to make more spacers going this way. in this way and again this does not need to be done with pencil just your wax lines would be fine This middle area here, we are actually going to um, divide it in half from the outside to this 
middle box here. So we're going to just guesstimate. And what is going to happen here is that this box, a little box in the middle here, this is going to be white. This here area is going to actually be black. We're looking from here to here. And this area is going to end up being black. And the bottom part down here, even though we have these lines here, the, this bottom part here is going to be white and it's going to filter out into this area as white also. We'll get into that in a little while. Here's the little white box in the middle and the little black areas. From here to here, we guess. All right there. I'm just using my pencil to make it dark so that uh, we can get an idea of what we're doing here. We have this, this center line here. From here, I'm going to just take my pencil and draw up from there. Look at the other side and come over here. Again, this middle line, this middle spacer here. This line, we go up. And this line here, we come sideways. Now I'm going down and sideways. Down and sideways. So this is the look we're getting here. And as you can see on the paper, maybe this shows a little bit better. So here's our middle area. We have black and then the white and then we came down and sideways. Here I'm showing we went up and sideways. This makes this here box. This area is white. These areas will be white also. Or you can make it into whatever you want in this area. These are just ideas for you. In this area, we can decide if we want to put little flowers or maybe just a circle. I have chosen to put little um, lines going through for um, netting a netting design, but you, you can put a flower if you want to. And then in these squares, I am working with uh, little diamonds inside of these squares. So I'm putting my little tick marks here for my guidelines, so my Diamond shapes um, are more even. And again, this can all be done by uh, guesstimating too. Again, in these little diamond shapes, you can put anything that you would like. I chose to put a little flower in each one. Let's see if I can show you. See? Just a little flower. And now we have these areas. I put a spacer all around this triangle shape. just so that it separates.
it helps make um, the design stand out a little more. And then in these areas, I can um, either put something in there, it's quite a small area, or just leave it um, a color, pick out a special color that will stand out. Now it's time for me to move on to the top and bottom of this panel. I will be measuring off about an eighth of an inch all around. As you can see, I have measured out my eighth inch line around this triangle. And over here you can see where I've made my uh, separations. And all I did there was I extended the line down here and here. And now I've just again guesstimating the distance. The reason I'm doing this is because uh, what I'm going to put in here are considered um, either waves or curly cues. So to do the curly cues, all I'm going to do is start off with making the letter C. Just like that, I go halfway and then I just make a little curly cue. I'll come up here about halfway and bring it down and just swing it over again. A C and a curly Q. And I will continue this around. And these come out fairly uniform in doing it this way. They can be done freehand also. Oops, I got a little wild there. And this here is a pretty design on the eggs. It kind of makes them look a little lacy. And then in this area, I can put another flower. Or I can go ahead and come up with the design to fill in the whole area. And that's my design. Now it's time to get to work with waxing all the areas that I want to remain white. I'm working on waxing in all the white areas. I want to show you how I'm able to keep up with my markings in this middle area. In my spacers, I have made halfway marks. And this here area will end up being white. The ends of this here will be white. I made the halfway marks to remind me that these here are spacers and that these are not to be marked on. So what I normally do so that I can keep my place and that I can also keep my lines more even all around, I will start on one end And I want it to have two spacers on 
each side of each box. Doing this way helps keep the lines more even. And I can keep up with them better. Another thing, I do my best not to go over the lines. Like when I'm working here and I'm coming to the end, I try to stop just right on that line. Because if I go over, then I will want to have to clean that up, and that's time consuming. So, as you can see, the lines are even. And again, like I said, th the middle part will, from the middle part down, this will be white. When I'm doing larger areas like this here, I, I will sometimes outline them. But mainly when I'm working, I go in circles with the wax. I get better coverage that way. So many times, like I said, I just outline it somewhat. And then I start going in circles. And doing this, I find that there's less areas that did not take the dye. Or that um, the, sorry, that the wax did not cover and dye has gone on to the areas that you don't want it to be. So this is where we're at on, on the egg at this time. When I finished all the white areas, because I still have all my little curly cues or waves to do in here also, um, then I will clean the egg and then put it in my first dye. Using these designs, I've shown you how I put them on an eggshell. I've made one slight change and what I did was put spacers around these triangles. Many times I forget to uh, initial my eggs. This is a good time. These are our designs that we learned. 
I was going to point out another thing is that I make a copy of my old photos. So now I have a paper copy that if I want to, I can write on them. So when I made the spacer on that little triangle, I tried it out first by making some marks on my my paper. Now it's time to put my egg into the first dye bath. Normally I would just wash my egg with um, uh, just the ivory dish soap, but because I wanted the the areas to be raised a little bit, I did etch the egg just slightly in the work, works toilet bowl cleaner. After that, I dipped the egg into some straight vinegar, but now it's time to put my egg into some dye. All the yellow area has been waxed in. Our next dye will be orange. With the basic or beginner egg, we normally only need white guidelines. However, when we move up to the next level and the designs are more intricate, as with this egg, white, yellow, and orange guidelines are needed. I use tips 1 and 0 to write this design. Now that all my guidelines and designs are on the egg, all I need to do is dye and wax in the different areas. This will be done with red and green dyes. At this time, I have finished waxing in all my green, and my next step will be to put the egg into red dyes. But before I do, since I've cleaned the egg back to white, it is time to look over my designs to make sure that everything is waxed in, that none of the wax is peeled off, and now I can begin with my red dyes. As you see in the photo, I have just a small area to do in red. And then the final color will be black. At this time, I'm working on uh, waxing all my red areas. This is a pretty strawberry red. For this waxing, because the areas are larger, I will be using the number two tip. It covers a larger area. Work is nearly done on this egg. The next dye bath would be black. However, while I was working with my red, I noticed a few areas that I missed. This area should be green, and so should this one and this one. So I'm going to use the small brush 
and just dip it into my green. Let it well up in this area. This is the good thing about being able to uh, clean your egg back to white. It gives you a chance to take care of the spots that you may have missed. And also if any of the uh, wax has come off. I'm going to let this green dye dry on here and then I'll wax. And then the final step will be black. We've come to the end of this video. And now we have the finished egg.